WCBI News at 6 starts now. Developing tonight, a Nanawaya football player is hospitalized after a shooting Friday afternoon. The alleged gunman, the teen's uncle, 38-year-old Frederick, Frederick Nunn, that is, according to the Kemper County Sheriff's Office, he's charged with aggravated assault. Kemper County Sheriff James Moore says the teen was shot four or five times and flown to UMMC in Jackson. The shooting happened at, uh, at Highway 397 around 4 Friday afternoon. Both Kemper and Winston County deputies responded to the call, but the shooting happened on the Kemper County side. Now, Sheriff Moore says that the teen was in critical condition. Stay with WCBI and WCBI.com for an update. Well, some people in the community are still demanding Harry Sanders step down as supervisor in Lowndes County after his racial comments to a local newspaper in June. Protesters gathered outside the Lowndes County Courthouse again today, their goal to urge Sanders to resign. Supervisors for District 5, Leroy Brooks, says it's a very difficult situation to be an elected official and have to sit with Sanders, knowing the way he feels. Who says that in this social and political time about a, a group of people? And he didn't show any remorse for it. He says, I meant it. And so that's an that's a embedded kind of hatred. It, if he was just an individual in the community, it'd be one thing. But he's an elected official with influence and authority over people's lives. And he gets to say that. And he doesn't seem to care about what the community thinks. Sanders' term expires in 2024. Well, the Mississippi State Department of Health reports 1,134 new cases of COVID-19 with 30 new deaths. There are 37 new cases among long-term care facilities. The total number of cases since March 11th is now more than 59,000 with more than 1,600 deaths. It's presumed that more than 35,000 Mississippians have recovered from the virus. Well, starting Monday, masks will be required in Lowndes County. This comes after the governor issued an executive order making it mandatory. Individuals will have to wear masks while at public gatherings or in a shopping environment. The order also limits social gatherings to no more than 10 people indoors and 20 people outdoors. The city of Columbus is issuing out guidelines for businesses to follow in light of the execute, um, executive order, that is. If any employee has been exposed to the coronavirus or showing symptoms, they'll be sent home and must be tested. Businesses must sanitize all high-touch areas once every two hours, and they must also maintain a six-feet separation between customers. The hope has always been people would do it without being required by the governor to do it. But perhaps just as importantly for those people that don't recognize the value of the um, health benefit is there's a $500 fine or six months in jail penalty associated with violating the governor's orders. The order will be in effect until August 17th. Well, Starkville Octibaha Consolidated School District delays the start of the new school year. The decision comes after dozens of parents request to switch to virtual learning. The new start date is now August 24th. Superintendent Dr. Eddie Peasant says that the district has gotten more than a thousand requests from parents since July 21st. That's 20 percent of the student population that's wanting to move to virtual learning due to COVID-19. The district the district says it was prepared for virtual learning for 25% of students, but nothing more. And to prepare, teachers will start training over the next two weeks. Well, Pearl River Resorts announces plans to reopen. The Golden Moon Hotel and Casino will reopen on August 8th with a few changes to their operation. Starting this month, all attendees will be required to wear a face mask. Patrons will have their temperatures checked automatically when entering the facility. Only every other machine will be open to promote social distancing, and the facility will also use an ultraviolet air filtration system. For a week of record numbers in deaths from COVID-19, testing efforts are being hampered by Tropical Storm Isaias, which is forcing the closure of many outdoor testing sites in Florida. CBS News correspondent, correspondent Danya Bacchus has the latest from Los Angeles. Florida is bracing for a possible hit from the storm as the state also grapples with record numbers of coronavirus deaths. California has now confirmed more than half a million COVID-19 cases since the pandemic began, the most infections for any state. We need the National Guard to come out to tell these fools who don't want to wear masks 
that if you're going to you're going to wear the mask or you're going to go home. For millions of out of work Americans, enhanced unemployment benefits expired overnight. On Capitol Hill, top congressional Democrats met Saturday with Trump administration officials to try to break a deadlock with Republicans on a new relief plan. Just saying we'll do halfway doesn't work when people need homes and need jobs and need housing and need help. We're still a long ways apart, but like with any deal, as you make progress, I think it's important to recognize that you're making progress. Another House member, Arizona Democrat Raul Grajava, announced he has tested positive for the coronavirus. Speaker Nancy Pelosi issued a mask order for all House members and staff this week after Representative Louis Gohmert tested positive. Gohmert had made a point of not wearing a mask on Capitol Hill. And starting today, Target, Gap Stores, and McDonald's now require masks nationwide. Danya back is CBS News, Los Angeles. Now, East IS was downgraded from a hurricane to a tropical storm earlier today. Let me show you the latest information on that. Right now, winds of 70 miles an hour just off the coast of Florida to the east of Miami. Now, you notice right at the end, a little bit more convection developing at the latest run. This thing could actually re-strengthen into a hurricane here in the next couple of hours. Of course, we'll continue to monitor that. Let me take you to a live look outside, though, here in downtown Columbus. Locally, temperatures are hot. We are 87 degrees with sunshine out there. There is actually a cold front moving through the area. That is going to dip our temperatures down just a little bit overnight tonight. We're going to get down into the mid to upper 60s under a mostly clear sky. That cold front also going to sweep away our rain chances. Maybe some showers and storms tomorrow and Monday, but generally for the next several days, we are looking a lot drier. Only a 10% chance of rain through the middle and end portion of the week. Maybe a little bit more in the way of pop-up storm activity by Saturday. In general, though, I think we're looking good for the next several days. Mostly sunny skies, and that cold front also going to knock our temperatures down just a little bit. Probably not noticeable, but what you are going to notice is the lower humidity. So even though we're going to see highs in the mid to upper 80s, it's going to be a lot less muggier and a lot more pleasant through the middle and end of the week. I've got that full first alert seven day forecast coming up in just a bit. Cash. All right, thanks, Trevor. Well, school districts around the state have different reopening plans, but for many parents, the worry, uh, the worry about reopening in the midst of the COVID-19 crisis is universal. Courtney Ann Jackson spoke with two moms and has more on the story. Take a look. Erin McKenzie has two girls going into kindergarten and fourth grade. She knows the impact COVID-19 is having on their community in Pike County, but her girls will be going back on a traditional schedule. Just because of our work schedules, we don't really have the op option to, um, to send our children um, virtually because we don't have anybody to watch them. Still, she worries. Hopefully that their little immune systems are better and, and they'll be safe. I mean, I would just have to, to pray about it and hopefully um, they'll get through it and, and not, you know, bring it home and transmit it to anybody else or, you know, I don't know. It's just scary. <laughs> and we may have already seen evidence of how it can happen. Current schools were the first in the state to reopen Monday. Friday, they shared someone at the high school has tested positive. And the North Pike School District Superintendent confirms three students tested positive after participating in an extracurricular activity. I have two boys. Travis is 13 and Trevor is 12. Thomasina Tory feels fortunate to have the option to keep her 12 and 13 year old sons at home for distance learning, especially since she's caring for her elderly mother and uncle in her home. We've had outbreaks of strip and it spread like wildfire. So little things like that, if you can't control an outbreak of strip in a school, the parents that gotta bring their kids to school are gonna bring them to school. And what if this child is not showing immediate symptoms or our parents are not honest and say, hey, my child was around Uncle Jim, they had COVID. Courtney Ann Jackson, WCBI News. The governor says he plans to spend the weekend reviewing each school's reopening plans and will comment on them next week. Well, the Starkville Junior Auxiliary hosted their annual Stuff the Bus event this morning. The program took place in the Chick-fil-A parking lot from 11 to 2. Anyone could drive through and drop off school supplies for children in Octibaha County. JA members were collecting the usual supplies like notebooks and binders, but they were also taking up items like face masks and hand sanitizer. I think it's really important just because of the climate that we're in right now. Um, I mean, obviously our mission for the Junior Auxiliary of Startville is to just support and be there for the children of Octavio County and to serve them. Um, but just right now with, with COVID-19 happening, 
and just all of that. I think it's even more important this year. Um, like I said, some some parents and students or maybe children that are cared for by their grandparents are not able to go out and get those supplies. Um, and so I think that that is a really important part of it. So this is just available to them if they absolutely need it. So. Donations will be taken up throughout the year. For ways to contact the Junior Auxiliary of Starkville, go to WCBI.com. Coming up, two local women are honored after serving their church for more than 40 years. Stay with us. WCBI News at 6 p.m. with Cash Matlock. Welcome back, everyone. Today, members of the St. James Methodist Church joined forces at a local assisted living center to hold a small celebration for some special members. Hoida Knowles and Annie Frazier have been involved with the church for more than 40 years. And church member Eve Priester says that you can still bond with someone even from a distance. To be confined and not know everybody that's in there, we wanted them to know that we love them for being who they are and for serving God and then giving back to them is what we wanted to do and show love. Church members met in front of the nursing home. Mrs. Knowles is 89 years old and Mrs. Frazier is 80 years old. Well, CBS All Access announces a major expansion and Jeff Daniels is former FBI Director James Comey in the first trailer for The Comey Rule. Chris Martinez has those stories and more in today's Eye on Entertainment. Who's there? Diego! The Umbrella Academy returns to Netflix for an explosive season two. The hit series, based on a comic book of the same name, follows a family of wayward, would-be superheroes. Season two of The Umbrella Academy premieres on Netflix today. CBS All Access is giving you more shows than ever to binge at home. The streaming service announced it's adding more than 3,500 episodes of shows from BET, Comedy Central, MTV, Nickelodeon, and the Smithsonian Channel. New exclusive Exclusive series have also been announced to the lineup, including the SpongeBob SquarePants spin-off Camp Coral. Crazy skills, outlandish pranks, and a whole lot of fun are in store in an all-new episode of the greatest at-home videos. Good job, Dad. So graceful. Cedric the Entertainer hosts the program that features some of the best home videos in the age of social distancing. The greatest at-home videos airs tonight, right here on CBS. And we're getting a first look at Jeff Daniels as former FBI director James Comey in the upcoming miniseries, The Comey Rule. I have looked at this from every angle. They're all terrible. The two-part miniseries is based on Comey's best-selling book recounting his time working with President Trump. The Comey Rule premieres on Showtime this September. That's your Eye on Entertainment. Chris Martinez, CBS News, Los Angeles. Looking a lot like summertime outside right now on the Alpha Insurance Camera Network. Some of those friendly puffy clouds popping up. The sun just beginning to set. And it is a hot and humid one out there right now, but there are some big changes on the way. Changes you'll want to know about. I've got those details in my first alert forecast right after the break. Stay with us. Your WCBI first alert AccuWeather forecast with meteorologist Trevor Burchett. Plenty of activity here in the weather department in the last couple of days. Here's what we're keeping our eyes on. Good news is rain chances are actually going to be going down over the next several days. Believe it or not, we've got a couple of cold fronts coming through. Pretty rare for summertime, but I don't think anybody's going to complain. That also means heat and humidity diminishes. Feeling a little more comfortable by the middle of the week. Sunshine also sticking around. And of course, Tropical Storm Isaias out in the Atlantic. We'll get to all of that coming up in just a little bit. But let me start off with your tropical update. Was a hurricane when you woke up this morning, now down to a tropical storm. It's still close, though. Winds are 70 miles an hour, just a few miles an hour short of a hurricane. And the reason it got diminished back to a tropical storm is because it kind of fell apart right here over the Bahamas. But watch right here at the very end, right over the center, that blossom right at the very end right there. That's indicative of a little bit more strengthening with the storm. So something we're going to have to watch here over the next couple of hours or so because the National Hurricane Center does expect this thing to strengthen back into a hurricane. It's going to get close to landfall in Florida if it doesn't actually make a landfall. It's going to stay right off the coast is what we're thinking. But still, though, some gusty winds and heavy rain on the east coast of Florida. And then it's basically going to follow up the eastern seaboard here by Tuesday and Wednesday. Could be bringing impacts to the Carolinas. 
and possibly the New England states closer to New York City. All of that is a tropical storm, but still a tropical storm can still bring in some pretty high tides and some gusty winds. So definitely something to keep an eye on. No impacts expected here locally. Uh, can you believe it? August 1st today, looking back to July, though, our highest temp 96 on the 19th and the 20th of last month. 70 was our lowest temp set on several days through the month. Our rainiest day was right on the first, nearly two inches of rain there. And our total rainfall for the month actually pretty close to normal, just about four and four tenths of precipitation. Not too much, not too little, just the perfect amount of rain through the month of July. Speaking of rainfall, just a couple of isolated showers there down at the Noxby Winston County line and some showers right there along uh, Interstate 59 and down south of Pickens County. Not a whole lot going on across the WCBI viewing area, but some showers and storms still remaining possible. That thanks to this cold front draped across the region, helping to fire up some of those storms. And you can actually tell it's dropping the temperatures just a little bit. We're 86 in Columbus, 78 in Memphis. Some folks in northwest Mississippi are down into the mid 70s, so a little bit of refreshing air. But honestly, cold front probably not going to do too much to our temperatures here locally. Tonight we fall down uh, to the upper 60s, so right around 70. Maybe a shower or two in the next couple of hours. Generally, though, I think we're dry tonight under a partly cloudy sky with some light west northwesterly winds. Tomorrow, 89 for the high, pretty much right where we were today with a mix of sun and clouds. Warm for the afternoon. And once again, we can't completely rule out an isolated shower. We're only going to say a 20% chance though tomorrow, so not a big issue there. This cold front continues off to the east. That brings our rain chances down for Sunday. I think Sunday's looking pretty dry, as I mentioned, but we've actually got another cold front here setting up shop. That comes in Monday, so some more pop-up storms possible Monday. After that, high pressure moves in. That means we are drier and more comfortable through the middle of the week. Take a look at the comfort index. I think you're going to like this. This should get me some likes on Facebook. We are going down into the comfortable category in terms of the humidity by the middle of the week. So it's still going to be hot. This is not going to be a, a true cold front where we dip down to the 30s or anything crazy. We're still going to be in the 80s, close to 90, but the humidity is going to make things feel a lot more comfortable here by the middle of the week. Here's a look at the AccuWeather 7-day forecast. Again, mostly dry for Sunday. Can't rule out a storm or two. Better rain chances come in here on Monday. Generally, though, for the rest of the week, looking fairly dry. As I mentioned, feeling a lot more comfortable Tuesday and Wednesday. Warming up, though, by next weekend. Overnight lows in the 60s and 70s. So a little bit of good news. Not a bad seven-day forecast. Stop saying it's going to warm up. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we <laughs> get there. you got to get rid of warming up. Yeah. To cool. I'm ready for fall. Me too. Definitely Have you ready? brought up the pumpkin spice yet? It's August 1st. I knew you were going to say <laughs> pumpkin spice. Uh, oh, I want to bring out the decorations already. I think I'm going to wait just a little I, bit longer. Well, see, I celebrate Halloween all year long. So my decorations are up. All right. <laughs> thanks, it. Trevor. Thank you, guys. Um, we're going to have some WCBI sports coming up after the break. Stay with us. WCBI Sports with Courtney Robb. WCBI Sports 2020 High School Football Tour is brought to you by Itawamba Community College, Cannon Ford of Starkville, Monroe County Farm Bureau, Max South Broadband, and the Bank of Vernon. With everything, we, we didn't go back, uh, you know, March 11th, I guess, is when all this kind of kind of came down and we didn't get back in school after spring break. So so we're pretty much, we're just going to be starting from scratch, uh, starting from scratch on, on Monday. We haven't done anything uh, on campus, uh, so we're, we're kind of uh, new territory as far as that goes. So uh, hopefully the guys have been working out on their own with the uncertainty and not knowing, uh, you know, really the, the best course. Uh, we just held off and I, I kept putting it off and putting it off and and uh, as far as trying to get in person or you know or do that type of thing, I'm hoping we're able to do as much as as we possibly can as safely as we can uh, uh, to keep you know the the kids and the coaches safe but uh, but you know we're it's it's just I guess the the buzzword right now is uncertain it's a it's an uncertain situation we should be all right uh in the line uh that that'll be our most experienced uh, area and uh, but we're gonna have to replace a quarterback and running back uh that uh, kind of for for most of our offense last year so 
Uh, we've got some young players coming up. I think we'll you know, be able to do that, but uh, it, it's going to be uh, some inexperienced skill positions and, and more experience uh, in, in the line, offensive, defensive line returning. But with the line that we should have coming back, uh, I feel like we ought to be able to run the ball pretty good, and then we'll just have to see how it develops from there. But uh, we'll we'll stick with the offensive philosophy that we, we've always kind of kind of run with, which is uh, run the ball first and then and then set the set the pass up off of that game. It's not going to change much from previous years as far as the message. It's just a matter of of uh, maybe the obstacles and some of the difficulties uh, uh, are different than what we're used to, but there's still things that uh, whatever we can do to overcome them, that's what we're going to try to do. WCBI Sports 2020 High School Football Tour with Victory Christian is brought to you by Burns Dirt Construction Incorporated and the Flower Girl Wedding and Florist. An isolated storm tomorrow, some more pop up storms for Monday, but generally Tuesday through the weekend looking pretty dry. A mix of sunshine and clouds, also a lot more comfortable. Highs only in the upper 80s. Is there a full moon this weekend? Don't think so. Nope. Am I off? Is that totally random? <laughs> sorry, Jerry. Anyway, sorry, you guys. Thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you back here at 10.